Welcome back to the unofficial Bozier Senior Hockey League podcast. I'm Corey. I'm joined by the Maritime Warrior, Corey. That's me. Your name is still the Maritime Warrior. Um, I, I'm recording with Joel once again tomorrow. We got a oh. bunch of stuff. This was a busy, busy, busy weekend for wrestling. WrestleMania weekend, one of the best WrestleManias in years. Uh, you actually asked me top three all the time. Uh, it's close. It's really it close. Was a good, it was a good mania, man. It was a really good mania. Uh, yeah. Night two especially was night two. insane. Night two, I went undefeated. Got every single prediction right to the to a T. Even the cash in, I got that right. At least you're better at predicting that than you are predicting uh, hockey. Hey, we we still have a bet to uh, pay for. We got to figure out what I'm going to do. I uh, thought your friendship we'll was the bet. That. All right, fine. I get to, I get easy. to be. I get to be your friend. You're that's, so easy. That's payment enough. That's payment enough. That's I love you, bro. Enough. We love you, bro. Um, a couple weeks ago or now or about a week and a half ago, we went and saw a uh, West Kent Steamers game we where did. they got eliminated from the playoffs. Uh, How did you find that game? We haven't really been to much Steamers. We were at early on. We were at the home opener, and then we really didn't go to anything, and then we were at their last game of the year. That's um, the funny part. We, at, we were at the first game at the JK, and we were at the last game in the JK. Uh, anything in between? Nothing. I watched a lot of it on Flow Hockey, but, uh, yeah, it's hard to be at all those senior games and then still be able to get some Steamers games. But it was yeah. good hockey. It was a lot of fun that night. I enjoyed it. Uh, the arena was packed. So packed. Uh, when the Timberwolves scored it was still pretty loud because I think half a mirror machine showed up for that. But it was yeah. a big mirror machine crowd, man. Yeah. Uh, they love their Timberwolves. Um, mirror machine is such a great crowd though. Like never a dull time with them. I love that city. It's such a good time. Yeah. Uh, then uh, I went and checked out the eclipse in mirror machine with uh, Cheryl and Tracy. Which, sorry if anybody's not into those pictures or videos, but I posted a few. Um, it was awesome, man. I really, I really had a good time. Yeah, I watched the eclipse from home. I didn't have the special glasses, so uh, once the eclipse was full, I looked at it, and then when I saw it was like starting to, the sun was starting to peek out. I averted my eyes. You wouldn't want to go blind. It'd be a no. terrible thing for Corey. No, could you like you. wrestling too much? Yeah, I like wrestling and hockey too much. Like, my God. I, I've been, like, having dreams, legit dreams, that I'm at a BSHL game. Like, I'm missing it. Man, I don't know what happened to me last night, but uh, as we're recording this, it's Tuesday, the 9th of April. Um, I, I got home last night. We recorded the interview that we have tonight with uh, Charles Austin, which uh, was unbelievable. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. That guy's the best. Um, but I don't know. I went to the, went to the eclipse, checked that out, went and grabbed supper with Cheryl and Tracy, came home, did that interview, which was a blast. Then I went to bed and I think I traveled like three kilometers tossing and turning in my sleep last night. <laughs> I woke up at one point and Tracy was like hanging on the edge of the bed by a toothpick. I have no idea. I shouldn't fall on her ass. And I had like three feet on the other side of me. And, uh, then I woke up another time and I have a CPAP. My CPAP was wrapped like the hose was twice wrapped around my forehead. It was so weird. I was like, man, I don't know what I'm doing here. But, uh, yeah, it was, I don't know, it was a weird night of sleep for me. So, uh, I don't know. Figured I'd share that with you, Corey. Corey looks very, like, confused right now. No, uh, some people sleep with a CPAP machine. Some people sleep with championship belts. And, uh, sure. Um, <laughs> We have a phenomenal interview tonight, Corey. Yeah. Uh, tell me about how you feel after that interview. Uh, Charles Austin is going to think I was drunk because uh, he, I'm telling you, this guy should be doing a radio show or something because you get lost in his stories. Yeah. We talked about, I'm not going to spoil the stories that we get into, but he's just going into these stories and he's like putting details everywhere. And I'm just like getting so invested in these stories and just, I think, I think he topped his first interview. I think he did too. It was a phenomenal uh, time just sitting and talking with him. Mm -hmm. I had some questions prepared and I had some things to kind of guide the conversation, but 
most of the time I really just kind of sat there and enjoyed his story. So um, it will not be the last time we have Charles Austin yeah. on a real uh, senior hockey legend in yeah. New Brunswick. He solidified um, the fact that he's my favorite guest that we had. And we had some great guests. I, I love every guest that comes here. Charles Austin makes you feel comfortable in your own show. <laughs> Wow, how's Cheryl gonna feel when she finds out that she's not your your favorite guest? Well, I'm I'm sure she'll be fine with that because it's Charles Austin. She's she's not a guest; it's her show as well. Absolutely, Cheryl's a part of the family. Charles there is there. Charles is too, though. I love that guy. Cheryl's he's, a part of the podcast team, though. There so. you go. Charles is uh, definitely podcast family. Podcast, uh, just man. The the door is always open for Charles Austin. I'd Absolutely. have him on anytime that he wants to. Um. I'd still love to see him play some more. But, yeah, uh, me too. But uh, hey, I respect I re- the decision. Exactly. Stole the words right out of my mouth. I respect the fact that he called it quits when he felt it was the time was right. Um, you know, the track of the Alpine should give him all the respect in the world and retire his jersey number. I agree with you. Um, we asked him a couple of harder questions, which isn't normally my style, but I, I felt like there was things that people would want me to ask. And he also goes into um, some of the tougher sides of, of playing hockey, the mental sides. And I thought it was very interesting. So uh, we're going to throw to that interview here in a second, but a huge thank you to Charles Austin, just truly such a generous person with his time and uh, with his stories, you know, this guy's uh Guys, the best. We certainly do appreciate him, Corey. Yeah. Yeah. Anything I, else to add? I, I'd like to one day share a beer with that guy. You know, he seems like just a genuine, great human being. Uh, you know, this was appearance two of his of probably a thousand. You know, uh, doors always open to Charles Austin. Thanks everyone for listening, and uh, here's the interview with Charles Austin. Enjoy. Take care. Welcome to the BSHL Podcast. It's Corey and Corey. We're joined once again by one of our favorite guests wearing a BSHL hat. Um, Charles Austin, what's going on, buddy? Not much, guys. Thanks for the invite. Uh, I know we had that schedule a long time ago, but I'm super happy and pumped to see you guys again. Yeah, it's nice to see you, brother. Um, How's retired life? (laughs) Oh, well, you know... um, (laughs) Well, I just wanted to start, first of all, of thanking you guys, like, from uh, from the track of the Alpine. I know uh, I'm I'm spreading the word from them, but across the league, like, you guys did such a good job. And I was just listening at the podcast at first, and it started small, and then it just blew out out of proportion. <laughs> I find, like, you guys did such an amazing job. You guys did your homework. And I think that's what gave you guys the credibility across the league on how, you know, you did such like research and, and learning about the players and the teams and going throughout the league and visiting all the rinks. And and then it, it was just amazing to watch after Christmas. It was just another level with <laughs> how this podcast was going. And I just wanted to thank you guys uh, you know, from the track of the Albine, but also from the players, uh, it means a lot. And, you know, uh, I think it brought a lot of of uh, interest uh, throughout the league from the fans and just say uh, the building all across the league, all the buildings were full, jam-packed. It was so nice to play and must have been a hell of a ride for the Housey and, uh, and River Valley for the playoffs that they had. It was, uh, it's wild where we began and, uh, to think on day one, on the opening night, I think we had like 300 people. Now we're almost at 10,000. Um, the league's awesome, man. People are amazing. All of the teams have been, been wicked. You were one of the early supporters. I remember I had an interview with Nick Foran, I think. Yeah. And some, I was like, man, who just commented on this? And then I realized it was you. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. That, uh, meant a lot. So, uh, yeah, thanks, man. Certainly do appreciate it, Corey. Yeah, I'd, I've said this once. I'll say it a thousand times. That interview with Charles Austin is still my favorite. Just 
you get nerves and with Charles, he made you feel comfortable on your own show. So, you know, I want to thank Charles Austin, uh, just the best, the absolute best. One of my favorites. Oh, thank you. No, uh, retiring, retiring life has been good. I took You're like probably a little, busier now than before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the kids and everything with spring hockey and that little uh, retiring project I have going on with uh, Atlantic Hockey Group and being the coordinator from the for the North, uh, bringing that like, spring hockey in the region uh, for the kids. Uh, we have uh, 113 athletes that will be playing for uh, wow. for spring hockey. But I took a little pause. Uh, I'll admit it. I took I took a little pause for a while. It, it was really it really was really tough on the head. Uh, just everything that went on with with the way that it ended. It, I wasn't really pleased about it, but it is what it is, you know. Uh, at at the end of the day, the fans, if whatever they want to do or say it, it, you know, they have the right to say it. Uh, but it was really hard on the head and the mental health and everything at the end, uh, coming on the, you know, on the ice, starting the warm ups and already hearing my names and stuff like that. It was really hard, but I, d I don't want to elaborate on it, but yeah. that's why I kind of like went and hide myself a little bit, even listening to you guys or, you know, I still had the emotion and I remember so the videos that your sister Tracy made for me, and I was in Packetville with my uh, with my in laws and my wife, and I think it was the first time I really took the time to navigate uh, throughout Facebook and everything. And I saw that email and that moment that I saw myself just my one knee down, and I had the, my head down, and I looked. Uh, just forward and i remember that exact moment and it meant a lot to myself and saying maybe this is it you know i'm i may be tired of it mm -hmm. how hard sometimes senior hockey can be and i just started i just i cried i was bawling my wife's arm and I, it's just like going throughout all of those emotions you know i've been doing that for 17 years yeah, man. And the fans have been great for me and playing for Trackity has been great, but I think it was just a time to move on and maybe see something else for them. And, and yeah, I think last year when I, I stopped the season, we won, it was, this is it. Like I'm done. But over the summer, I was thinking, like, maybe I have another year just to see that other year, what could, could happen in that other year. And um, so it went pretty good. Like, I think I finished, like, 7-3. and three. I had really good games. And Miramichi, I remember, like, 60 shot, lost 3-2. When I saw you guys and Elsie Pottog, I had, like, a really good game. Like, I felt I was playing still good hockey. I still had good hockey in me. But... In the, I think over the time, it, in the back of my mind and hearing what was going on, you know, in the crowd and everything, I think uh, I was like, we say in French, usu, like, yep. yeah, uh, men, like mentally. And so, anyway, but I enjoyed it. And after, when the, the I really watched the final, like I really followed follow the final, I was ready to follow it. It took time. I, I didn't do anything about the Dowsie and, and shipping in series, but I really took time to appreciate the final and watching you guys on the Facebook lives. And But I took time for myself, but now I'm, I'm in peace with my decision. Good, man. The mental health side of hockey even senior hockey, serious, man. Like, you guys commit. It's not easy. Uh, you guys travel a ton. The schedule is not, not easy. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate that you bring a little bit to that side. You bring a little light to that side because I'm sure you're not the only guy that goes through that. It's uh, it's not an easy thing. No, like, um, at first, we didn't know about mental health before. And, like, when I started, let, let's say, my first 10 years – 
Yeah. Nothing was, we didn't have much Facebook and we didn't have much people commenting and, and stuff. It really started the first time and it really knocked me out. It was in 2015 when we played that series against Bokdush in the final. And people were saying on Facebook that I was the, the weakness of the team. We had like a, a really good team, but Bokdush had really a powerhouse that year. And I was the weakness of the team. And I, it, I think it was the first time I really had to, you know, step down from Facebook and, you know, being around and watching what's going on or throughout the league. And my coach uh, at the time, Brian Bask, um, funny story, he, he went to a, a training camp with like, a, he was drafted by the London Knights. He's from Tracody. And back like in the 90s, being drafted in the OHL, it was yeah. like pretty big. And he went to a Team Canada tryout and he was with Martin Brodeur. Okay. Oh, wow. So, yeah, he was a great wow. goalie. So, he was our coach. Now he owns a business in track. And he's, like, a good friend of mine. And thank God of him, like, just, you know, like, helping me and making sure that – because I always had confidence about my abilities yeah, for throughout sure. my career because I had success right from the get-go, winning four straights and then going in the final t- another two times. And, you know, I had success throughout my career. But it was the first time, really, it was people were always saying that, oh, Charles had a good teams in front of him. That was the reason why we were winning. And that was the first time, really, it struck me that I had to deal with the pressure and and what was going on because at first you're young and you don't really care. And, you know, I was just probably partying and, you know, <laughs> playing and whatever and then you know it started to to have those uh those challenges and tougher seasons and you know and yeah i remember game seven a lot of pressure but and ended up well we we won but and then continuously throughout the rest of my career you know you have those, those moments that you doubt about yourself and you have like bad games and you know, it's the kids got got into into the place, and I remember like when I had my first child, it was totally different. Like going to play, and I didn't see the the day before, and you you still have to go play in in Lamec and drive, and so that was really a big change for me. And then this year, it was really really tough after Christmas for some reason. Um. It was tough. And thanks to my teammates, some of my close friends that were really helpful for me and make sure, making sure like I still had the joy to come and go play for the for the for the boys and not thinking about what was going on in the stands. And yeah. but I don't want to put everything, everybody in the same pot. Yeah. You know, we have great fans in Track ID, like I said, after I announced my retirement, like all the the messages I got, even from from uh, players that plays against me, they were so, you know, saying like how how good I was and how the great career I had, and that was so was really touchy. And yeah, I'm really grateful for that. And I think you're you're definitely a well respected player by by a lot of other guys in the league because I've had a lot of people uh, when I asked them to come on. And then they do come on before the interview. We always have a little chat like we did today, talking about the eclipse and bullshitting a little bit. Um, and a, a few of them said, you know, I, I wanted to come on after I heard your interview with Charles because, like, you know, they respect you. If you, They knew that we took you seriously, we respect you. And they saw that, you know, we weren't here to bring the lead down or insult anybody. We just want to build it up and have a good chat. And uh, definitely you're, you're a person who I think uh, a lot of your opposition players have a, a high level of respect for yeah like i think one of the my most memorable memorable message was from uh, olivier gendron which i learned to hate for the last <laughs> couple of years yeah and like that's fair. you know we had like that uh, 
rivalry with Dahousie in the last couple of years because we met in the playoffs. And that guy gets you under your skin oh. like so bad, but he does <laughs> his role perfectly. Absolutely. Right? He's a he's a pest, like he's a Darcy Tucker type of guy, like you know. And he sent me a message saying, like, you know, Charles, like I have so much respect for you. And that was so like, you know, I got again emotional about about, about his message, like thinking about like I made an impact on those guys, like thinking even if we're playing against each other, we still have respect. We both, on both sides, we both want to win, right? Absolutely. And that's the main reason why we're playing. But, you know, he beat us the first time. We beat him last year. and But at the end of the day, we're both playing for the same reason. It's winning. But, you know, taking the time and sending me that message. And I, it was really, uh, really nice from him. So, yeah. That's awesome, man. I love I love those stories. Um, all right. Want to get a little bit lighter? Yeah. It's a pretty go. heavy interview so far. Yeah, all right, yeah. let's go. Yeah. All before, right. Before you do that. All right, yeah. all right go. Yeah, if you add it, want to add something. Else. I want to add go one go. thing. Um, that video that Tracy did, what's funny is that video of you with your head down going up. So Cheryl, Corey's sister, actually took that video and did not shut up about this video. She's like, this video, this video is really cool. You guys, you guys got to see this video and it's you lifting your head up. And, she, and we're like, it's a cool video, but what do you want us to do with it? She's like, I don't know. This is important. And it ended up being like the main piece uh, in the video for you. So I don't know if Cheryl is psychic or something, but credit goes all to her. She's like a huge Charles Austin fan. The second. Like I have still have chills. I, yeah. I remember. Because at that moment, I think the game was like 5-2. And that was a crazy game. Game number two in Shippigan, like That was crazy. And, you know, you're thinking about, you know, I, I, I can hear the fans, like, you know, going at me. And, you know, you're trying your best. Like, you try to, to prepare yourself the best. Like, that's what I'm teaching with my... my um, the videos and that video conference I'm giving to my goalie is like you try to prepare yourself, but you never know what's happened. Happened in a game, like a deflected goal or a bad bounce, and you're trying your best. And I remember that game, like I was I was feeling super good. I had a first good game, game number one. We lost two one. Yeah. And you know, we were outshouted by like, 32 to 17 the shot, something like that. And we're, you're five two. You you did your best, but still. And that was that moment. I felt like, you know, even if you're trying everything, it's not going your way. So you have your head down, and you look up. But it, we ended up tying five five in the last couple minutes, and then that overtime goal that was a beauty. Again, oh. was such a. It was like intense games. Oh. That was a that phenomenal series. series. That we, people still talk about. I I I had six or seven times I played Lame or Shippigan or whatever during my career, but everybody talks about that series. And we had game sevens, couple times against them, but like over time and and the <laughs> crowd and game seven, like the building was jam packed. But yeah, double that, overtime. Yeah. Double there was people time. standing on the metal in the back of the seats because there was nowhere to stand. I don't know. Yeah. That was that was crazy. The, yeah. the, I don't know what they paid the fire marshal to keep them away from that building that night, but man, there's no way that was legal. But that was it. that was a, it's been a long time ago though that we had that much people in Trackity. But um I remember like my first couple years when like the fights were bad and we had a lot of people like that at many, many games, but it was fun. It was fun for both organizations, for the players. And like we were on the seat, even if I wasn't playing, like I was on the edge, you know, you want to oh, win yeah. and you want to keep it, keep it for the boys. And uh, yeah, it was, it was crazy. They ran out of beer that night. 
Uh-huh. That's my favorite. They ran out of beer. The bar <laughs> ran out of beer in the over in the first overtime. There's none. Um, I've never seen a rink run out of beer, but I love it. So it's yeah. a good night. It's so good for this towns too. Um, the rinks after COVID, especially, it was such a hard time. This has helped revitalize those uh, those little rinks. So yeah. it's phenomenal, Definitely. man. You gotta love it. We uh, I remember uh, and that that horn that we have on in during playoff time, eh? And yeah. we have that special horn that we put in. It's so loud. And I grew up, <laughs> just a, a, a side note, a first uh, anecdote I have. So when I was young, I would say like 10, 12 years old, sometime I had the permission to go see the Alpines. But my mom, there was a lot of fights back then, and my mom would let me go watch games if I had, like, a friend of mine was watching all the time with his dad, and I was going to the games. But I remember uh, I lived close to the rink. I would say, like, a kilometer from the rink. Yeah. And uh, it was just, like, another road, another street uh, across the rink. And anyway, I was playing ball hockey alone with my rollerblades, and listening if I could hear the the the, the horn. <laughs> and then I outside I was playing and I could hear the horn outside like a kilometer away when we were when Chakity was scoring. <laughs> so that's when I was like, oh they score a goal like and then I because we didn't have Facebook back then. That was like wow. 20 years, 25 years ago. Jeez. So yeah I was listening to the horn like, oh yeah they scored. <laughs> And some of those players, uh, I played with them at early in my career after. So funny story, yeah. Those are, man, that's amazing that you're out playing ball hockey. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a hell of a horn, man. It gets loud in that building. We love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So one, the Brawl and Miramichi against the Alpines. Um, you were there. Yeah, I was. You were in, was you were in net. Yeah, I was the main uh, character in that, during that night. Um, let's hear. Let's hear about that night because that that game never got finished. No, um, it was called. It was yeah. never finished, and it's got like twenty thousand or thirty thousand views on YouTube. I mean, I've, I've probably watched it fifty times. Let's be honest. Same. You've probably watched it fifty times. It's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's hear it. Tell me the story. So. Um, Oh, he's, he's even wearing cool. our T-shirt. This guy's yeah, the man. Yeah, Look yeah, at this guy. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So um, we heard rumors. So that was in 2011. Yeah. I think. Or 2012. December 2010, maybe. Or 2011. Yeah. Something 2011, like that. Yeah. 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 I, it's December 2nd. Yes. December 2nd, 2020. 2011. 2011. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So we heard rumors because that's when Facebook started and promoting the games and whatever. And we heard that James Scott or whoever wrote on Facebook, come watch the game. I'm going to give a show. Something like that. That was that. So we're in the dressing room and we come, come out from the civic center uh, you know the the alley going the tunnel going on yeah, the, the split yeah yeah the split you know nothing nothing to to be worried about and we I remember I'm always the first I get in and I look and there was 2,500 people at the warm up <laughs> and they're all stretching so yeah but Nick Foreign that year Nick Foreign was playing in uh, Rivière du Loup. Yeah, in that north, uh, uh, Ligue Américaine. Yep, Ligue Américaine. Yeah. So you had uh, I don't remember his first name, but Wolf. He was like a six foot seven guy defenseman. Yeah. So Wolf, Matt Shannon, uh, David Mitchell, uh, James Scott, um, the tough guy from uh, from the River Valley. Uh, uh, he played this year. Uh, uh, Brandon Kenny. No, Ugh, oh, I need someone he's, else. Is a prison? He's a prison guard, I think. Anyway, um, his name okay. is gonna come up. And then <laughs> they're all lined up on the red line, stretching, and they're looking at us. <laughs> we don't have anybody. 
anybody to fight. We don't have like Corey Smear back then. We don't have um, Pat Loudon. We don't have anybody. And we're thinking the only what is going on. Like what 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 is going on? They're all stretching on the red line. There's 2,500 people. So we finish a warm up. We go in the dressing room. We're all talking about it, and we're <laughs> shitting our pants. Like we're like what? There's something that's gonna come up. But, like, you're a little ignorant. You don't know, like, never happened to me I had to fight or never happened I was jumped on, never, ever, ever. So, um, anyway, the game goes on. First period, really quiet. We're leading, like, 2-1. Anyway, I made that routine save, freeze the puck, and co- here comes James Scott, like a train, and just, like, runs at me. Boom. My helmet comes off. Anyway, like... And then the scrum comes on and blah blah blah, and I have my best buddy. I was in his uh, one of in in his wedding party, Mathieu Le Boutier. Yep. Defenseman, it's not big, like not tall, but he can fight. Like he fought back uh, his size, but give good fights. And then he met he meets Chris Keating right in the middle of the ice, and he start you know he squares off with Chris. Chris Keating finishes flat on his stomach. And I'm like, holy, what? You know, we're in trouble. <laughs> if this guy finishes flat on his stomach, we are done, right? Yeah. So, anyway, I had to, I, David Mitchell jumped on me twice. James Scott came like two, two or three times. Anyway. Uh, I remember I finished the game. I had like a big bruise on my forehead. Anyway, what a mess. And I was teaching in grade <laughs> six uh, in a school. Now now it's close. Uh, Rivière du Portage, just like a little place uh, beside Trackity. But I told that, uh, so it's like 30 minutes from Miramichi. So I told, like, I'm playing in Miramichi tonight. You should... You guys should come see me play. Oh, no. I had like 10 students out of like 15 in my class. Well, why Why don't you, you didn't fight? You, you're scared. But I had to listen to that story <laughs> for a year. Oh, you should have like throw your blocker and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with James yeah, Scott. Or, yeah, with James Scott or like Matt yeah. Shannon. <laughs> yeah, Matt sure. Shannon, I, I think I told that story on the first episode with you guys that he came in first round ever in senior <laughs> hockey came to Joey Lozier that was yep. like was fighting quite often in the league and he went to him and he said hey Lozier want to go yeah I want to go home he said yeah. you know so Matt, yeah, Matt Shannon, Shannon's a scary dude I was scared of two players in my my career Matt Shannon and Todd Parker in Dalhousie yep that guy could have made me shit my pants. I'm telling you. And I, I worked with his mom, uh, Todd <laughs> Parker. She was my yeah. secretary at school. Okay. The nicest woman ever. The best secretary ever. Anyway, but Todd Parker, he was like so scary and Matt Shannon too. Like big. Did you tell his boy. mom that you were scared of him? Oh yeah, yeah. Like yeah, she knew. <laughs> It's like no, no, you couldn't. You couldn't fight with him. No, 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 no. He was such a and both like great players. Yeah, they could fight. They could play. They were tough. Anyway, and yeah, that that I had I had to he, and still these to continue on that. So that's in 2011. I had to that brawl and then in 20 i met my wife in 2020 uh, 2012 and in 2013 i had a job uh, uh, as a teacher in san andrews uh, school which is based in chatham now it's closed and now it's king elementary and uh, so first time i met all the teaching staff i was like hi my name is charles austin charles austin <laughs> Are you the guy who uh, had the brawl like a couple years ago? Yeah, yeah, that's me. That's, that's me. me. <laughs> like every single time I was meeting people from the Mir Bichy, like they were like, Charles, Charles Austin, are you the goalie? Like that got, you know, his ass kicked uh, in at the Civic Center? I'm like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> 
Oh my god! Hey, you see so how nice this nose is? I'm not a fighter. Yeah. Not a fighter. Yeah. No, no, no. My yeah, my nose is straight. Yeah, I'm not a fighter. At all. Oh my thank god. god for thank god for goalie masks. Oh, uh, but it took uh, like a, one second that you know I I tried to grab uh, David Mitchell, and then he just took my helmet off and start throwing punch. And oh my god, I went like a turtle like that. Absolutely, it took like uh, one point five seconds, and then the year after, I was playing with David Mitchell. <laughs> That's the best he, thing about senior hockey. Eh? Yeah, he came in in uh, with us. He yeah. came with us, and then we won the cup together in twenty fifteen. And I was tell, I like like I was chirping him in the dressing room. I was like, "Yeah, you think you're tough, eh? Like I would fight you anytime." But now <laughs> I knew he was he was my teammate. He wouldn't jump on me. But I was like. Yeah, you just sur- you just surprised me that time. But hey, if we square yeah. off again, I'm telling you, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> fight you. Oh, oh, oh. So oh, they're all man. everybody is good people. At the end of the day, like Nick Foran, he I played with him in Miramichi, the nicest guy ever. And still, like today, he sent me a message about my retirement. But just the nicest guy ever. And we were talking about how our wife looks alike. It's so bad, like on pictures, they look alike. They're they're they they have the same face, and you know he's such a good guy. And at the end of the day, like I said earlier, we're we're all doing that for the same reason: the love of sport and try to win. And you know, we're just doing our job. Absolutely, Nick Foran. It's hilarious with Nick. He's another guy who's been on the podcast a couple times, and um, I hadn't met him in person until after the River Valley series. So, Game Six, him and Brandon Kenny right in front of us, down behind the benches, almost fighting. And I'm like, yeah, Jesus, I could think of better things to do than fight those guys. And then game seven finishes and met Nick, had a chat with him. Nicest guy I'll ever meet. Like, it's crazy how they can turn that off. Yeah, 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 yeah. They do their job and that's it. Like, you know, playing for, uh, I'm playing for Lamec and Matt Shannon is playing for Book Tush. Yeah. And they drive together. From Miramichi to get to go play at the G, GK Irving, <laughs> and they fight, and then they go back in their car and they come back. And I'm like, <laughs> How can you do that? Right? They leave Just everything on the ice. Yeah. You know, they pack their stuff, they go back home all together, and they have a beer. I'm like, they even like tap their hand before, and they they don't they don't you know go easy on that on each other. No. Let's go. Oh my it's god! A, it's an it's interesting, almost... <laughs> interesting kind of person, man. I love it. It's uh, it's very interesting. But that's senior hockey, man. It's uh, especially back then, the early 2010s, the mid 2010s. It was uh, it was a different league. Um, hopefully next year we see that fight rule kind of go away because I don't know if that was necessarily a good thing for the league. Yeah, but that, uh, that last ten minute thing, yeah. Oh. Uh, the last ten minute thing for sure it was uh, led to some cheap shots, but mm-hmm. we'll uh, we'll see. So now let's start talking a little bit about your coaching and your schools. I did not know how busy you are. Um, you added me on Facebook sometime February March, and uh, over March break, I think you worked harder over March break than you do when you're at school. You are everywhere, dude. Um, what makes you want to push that hard with the schools? I just want to give back to, you know, for sure, like my own kids that now, you know, my, my son Jax is playing in net. Um, I'm not sure that he's going to continue, but my daughter is really into playing goalie for ringette. And I want to give back to them. I, I just love, I just love one that the passion for teaching, but also like, giving back of what I've learned during my time as a minor hockey player with Mario Larouche. He was, he was my, my goalie coach back then. And just like trying to give back and, and my motivation is one day how far I can bring one goalie. And I have like a couple that I had to, to train here and there that got drafted in the queue. But right now I have like a guy that I started like he was eight years old 
<laughs> and he signed for the moves, the Triple A moves, U okay. uh, U eighteen. And you know Xavier Roy, he's going in uh, Blainville Boisbriand for a showcase, and he, we want to try to get him drafted in the queue. So that's all my motivation, and to see that now we hear about how good goalies that we have in the north, and I even had like goalies from your place coming to my goalie camps. Yeah. So it's all now. I feel like I can't. Uh, give give up on them. I need to continue on, you know, building upon and try to to get them better. And you know, for sure, like it gives me a little sideline. Yeah, but sure. at the same time, it's that motivation of like trying to get everyone better and seeing the progress. And I've I've seen progress. I like can kids, are, like I have a kid that he was a red goalie in his entire career and now a U U13 he played double A this year and got invited to practice with the triple A so awesome. you know seeing that progress and and the enthusiasm in the parents and the goalies that's what fuels my motivation but also I'm doing it for my own kids that I know I'm offering a great service uh throughout my goalie clinics but and then uh for my uh coordinator job I wanted to, so I had a really good uh, ringette team this year. We lost one game. We won all of our tournaments. And we don't have much in the north for ringette. And I was thinking that we need something. And I started to to hear about the what they do in Moncton and they have spring ringette. And I'm like, I need to do something for them. Like for those girls, I have like my daughter's like a top goalie in, the, in New Brunswick. I have the two best players, U10 in New Brunswick. Like I, I have like a really good group that I'm gonna grow with with my daughter. Yeah. And I was thinking that I need to do something. So I, I heard about Ringette and I contacted, sorry, uh, Charlie uh, Bourgeois, and I was like, "Do you offer anything?" Because in the summer I worked for him for goalie camps. Yep. And he said, like, yeah, we have the junior attacks. So I said, like, could we bring any spring ringette? And he said, why don't you, I'm going to offer you the coordinator job. Would you like to bring some spring hockey, spring ringette in your region? So I, accept, I accepted the job. So, yeah, we have 113 athletes that's going to play. We have a spring team ringette that's going to go in Montreal, May 30th. Awesome. So, just a little, you know, it's, but that's our family vibe. Like th just this weekend, I went in Fredericton for my son and my daughter went with my wife and my youngest in Moncton for um, a goalie camp with uh, the ringette, Canada's ringette coach, whatever. She invented the, the goalie uh, glove. Okay. The trapper for the, the goalie glove. So, she went to that camp. She learned a lot, and she came back to me. She said, "Daddy, we don't do this properly. You didn't show <laughs> me that ringette is different than hockey." And I was like, "See, you learned something." So, but we have that. We love that busy life, my wife and I. So, yeah, that's, that's awesome, man. I love to yeah. hear what. Yeah, the Northern Moose have really become a, a, a solid team. Like you guys are really building up uh, hockey. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the future. Not that Northern New Brunswick hasn't always had good quality hockey, but you always hear about kids having to go to Moncton or having to go elsewhere. It's nice that uh, they can get that right in in Northern New Brunswick and really develop and become Q players. And then yeah. who knows where they end up. Because that's what I want to offer. The same opportunities that big center have like uh, Moncton, St. John, and Fredericton. I want to give the, the, the players the same opportunity to develop throughout minor hockey. You know, it, it just thinking about the, we played a team with my son this weekend that the entire 2017, they all played together the, throughout the year. And us, we had two practice together. Yeah. So, you know, we ended up, you know, not, it wasn't so bad, but I was just thinking about like if imagine if we practice once a week all together and building 
you know, all those players together, it would be phenomenal for for our region. So that's what we're I'm trying to do with with them. That's awesome. Um, where do you have your hockey camps? I know you're in Bathurst. Sometimes you're in Shippigan. Like, I don't know. I've seen. I, I know the rinks now because I've been everywhere in this freaking league. So I see a picture of you at a, a camp, and I'm like, this dude's in Shippigan today. And the next day he's in Bathurst. Um, it's where are you? Where are you? Where are you going to be uh, coaching? Where are you teaching? So usually I like the ba- the key serving in Bathurst. It's more like central, but I it's often Karaket. Karaket. I know the ring manager. He's doing like a a good job with me, and he's you know making little discount here and there. So I'm not paying as much for the ice time, so I can. Um, you know, my, my, I can offer my camps at, at a lower price. And then in Trakity, uh, what's easy with Trakity is I have some shooters. I have like already my connection with shooters because good camps are often based on good shooters, yep. you know. And uh, and then Bathurst, what's what's good for Bathurst? It's 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 uh, central from Camelton, an hour drive, the housey. Karaket, it's all, everyone is connected throughout uh, Akech Shadow, so it's an hour drive, so it's easy to fill out the camp in Bathurst, but is the key serving is more expensive, so that's why sometimes I need to, to charge a little bit more, but yeah, I'm, a, I'm across the north, and in the summer, I always go to the pro camp with uh, Atlantic Hockey Group, with Dave Kennedy, he was the goalie goalie coach for the steamers and i think he's the vice president too and i always go there and we have like the goalie coach from the moncton Wildcats, the goalie coach from the uh, st john sea dogs and uh so yeah we have like a good group of coaches and they always show me like the new techniques and the new trends with with goalies so i always make my, I always do my homework in the summer. So now when I come back and I do my camps, I can really up to date with the technique and what is going on. Cause man, the goalie techniques, it, it changes like, so fast. It's like, it's yeah. almost a science. No, it so, really is. Like the, the, even the gear has yeah, changed gear so much in the crazy. last five years. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind I of a nerd for take, gear. So I get it. Yeah. I always take that time to go a week in Moncton and that's how I get I get that and then I have my webinars that I just started with you know uh, talking about how to be a good teammate and anxiety because of the experience I had like I and I build on some uh, PowerPoint presentation and I'm offering those webinars to goalies and that got me to present all across Canada actually I have like a contract in uh, in Alberta, Grand Prairie, Prairie, sorry, and Halifax and Moncton. And so I'm trying to spread out the word that is, you know, how to deal with anxiety, but also like, it's okay. I always start my speeches when I'm coaching, like, hey, do you have butterflies today? And it's okay to have butterflies, right? Yeah. It, it means that you're ready and you care. You want to be here. If you don't want to be here, you probably don't have butterflies. So I always start up with with that and try to uh, to support my my goalies the best as I can. So if somebody wants to get in on your webinars or bring you in for their their team or how do they contact you? What's the best way? So usually I get like contracts through uh, hockey schools. Yep. So like uh, Charlie Bourgeois, I'm always connected with them. Uh, Tracadie Hockey School Academy de Hockey in Tracadie. Uh, but I have like uh, Mitch Paradis, a, a friend of mine. He coaches and he's a goalie coach in Alberta. So usually, the way it works, if you're if you're part of a, a goalie camp, you're probably gonna hear about my presentations, and I get invited here and there, and I do the presentations on teams if I can't if I can't be. Uh, uh, in person, I'll, I'll do it uh, virtually. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's a, it's a very smart way to, to go about it. Your reach is a lot bigger that way. It's, yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. Good for you. What, uh, what about, what about you, Corey? Any questions? 
Yeah, Corey. Me? I'm in front of this right now. <laughs> um, I, I got one personal question. Yeah, I don't know sure. If you want Go ahead, anything, sure. man. So these playoffs, the last ones that just passed, one of my favorite moments was going to either Shippigan or Trackety and watching these games. We saw some things there that maybe we shouldn't have seen, but how is it this rivalry? Like, how do you feel about this rivalry? It's just, it's just a proximity of the two places, right? Yes. Yeah. But that's the rivalry that's been passed along throughout all the players that play. Like, I've learned about that rivalry of hating shipping in Lamec. That when I started with all those Michel Savoie and Glenn Ferguson and Martin Negro, you know, passing along and that was kind of my role now in the in the last couple of years of like passing that along to the next players like and saying like here wearing that jersey is special and it's even more special playing against ship again and we don't like each other and we want to win it's like montreal and the nordies it was the same yeah. like you know, they had their right this year to talk across a Acadian Peninsula about <laughs> they won this year, yeah, right? And they could brag about it. But in the last seven times, right, for them, we had the right to brag about it. About it. And also, uh, before, not last year, but the two previous Cups, we won against them in the Akadi Shala in the final. So imagine like how <laughs> we had the right to brag about it. And then when they won the year after, it wasn't against us. It was against uh, the Marauders. But, yeah, that is he. you know, they still had a chirp about us. Yeah. You know, <laughs> all you got, we were waiting for you guys in the final and we didn't make it to the final. So I think it's just special. Just- just being there, just being in that environment, having that split crowd, um, yeah. just having the crowd chirp at the players, having the crowd chirp at the crowd, and just being there neutral. Like, I have no dog in this fight. I'm just part of a podcast. And then they like, they'll like say something and they'll turn to us. And it's like, hey, I, I got no dog in this fight. Just the rivalry there was probably the most exciting I've been at a hockey game ever. And like when a team would win, you'd think they won the cup. Like I yeah. even heard some shipping in fans say the cup was beating Trackety. And that that's saying a lot. That's a huge rivalry for the BSHL. Yeah, no, no, it's definitely and just like the way the rink is set up in shipping in, like that that loop, and you know, you know that the crowd in Trackety is stand is standing this this part of the rink. And then in Trackity, you know, around the bench, the shipping in bench, that's the, the crowd from shipping in. And you don't mix. You don't mix. You stand no. your face. No. Don't do that because, uh, you know, <laughs> and it's just, it's a special, it's a special rivalry to play. And like just having the chance I've played in that rivalry so many times you know, and so many occasions and, and it hurts, man. Shaking that hands as, you know, I think we played each other in my career, like eight, nine times and twice I had to shake as a loser and man, it hurts, you know, it's just, but at the end, like I said, we finished, it's done. And I met some of the guys I met like Luke Williams and Tommy Bezo and, like I had the chance to play with Lamec for a year and I made some great connection, but at the end of the day, everything was left on the ice and I went to see them and congratulate. And they did the same in the last uh, couple of years too, that we won against, against them. So, yeah. Will we ever see coach Charles Austin in senior hockey? That's a great question. Isn't it? Yeah, I love, like I, I was talking to my wife, the part about coaching that I love is behind the bench. Yeah. Like I get I get so intense. 
so like like the mo the motivation part the strategic part i love that you know uh, you know talking about strategy strategies and stuff like that in the dressing room and that's what it's all about with senior hockey not much like as practicing and stuff that's what i don't like about coaching i like to show but going to the ring and pre prepare a practice and stuff i'm more like like i said i didn't have nothing prepared for you guys but i'm i'm more like on the beat and you know i'm gonna i'm gonna swing it like i just give me a question i'm gonna and i'm the same as as a teacher so you know going to the the behind the bench it's a lot of that and that's what i enjoy you know there's nothing to be predicted it's you know, it's on the beat and you have to think fast. And so that's why, like, I enjoy, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe, but not, not now for sure. Like I'm going to spend time with my family and, and coaching my kids. But when, when they get older, maybe it, it could be something that I would pursue. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I was just kind of curious because it, it, to me, there's something about you, you're a leader. You're a leader. A lot of guys respect you. A lot of guys look to you. I can see the coach side there, but I absolutely knew that the answer was once your kids are a little older. Yeah. I think we'll see Charles Austin behind a bench somewhere. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I like that. I like to think about the game, like I said, uh, the strategic part, the way, you know, it's the way to try to beat the other person. You know, I would try to beat the other coach and, you know, try to, to think about something that outside of the box and you know that's what I like being with the girls at, at Ringette because I'm the head coach with my son I'm not but you know thinking about strategies and you know the game is tight and you're gonna make a call and you know you're gonna try to to get your team on top that's that's what I like about coaching so you never know who's the head coach with your son's team uh Pierre Luc Wallet is the yeah yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, okay. A great guy. Yeah. Yeah. How do you like uh, coaching with uh, Pierre Luc? Yeah, Pierre Luc is really fun. We and what's fun about Pierre Luc is we have a total different uh, approach, you know. But Pierre Luc is 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 really a, like I said, a team player. Like uh, we have April, a woman that coaches with us. Same. Like he gives a lot to us uh, and and the liberty to to do whatever we want but uh Pierre Luc is more of a positive and like giving feedbacks and i'm more like of the strategy part you know hey we should do this we should do that and so but we is they're just like six years old and we text yeah. all day and say like <laughs> hey uh, i've thought about this next practice and you know we should try that because uh, my son had a lot, a lot of breakaways the first game. So it's how, like, the challenge is, like, next time we play on the 21st. So how can we improve not giving up so many breakaways? But at that age, if you have a player that is really strong, he's just going to deke everyone and, you know. Absolutely. But they're really impressive for six years old, how they can shoot the puck and how they can play. It's amazing now. Like I was talking to Charlie today. Like we didn't have, we were not like that back 20, 30 years ago. You know how strong they are now. So it's, it's, hockey's evolved a lot, man. It's crazy. The the, yeah. the game's different. The equipment's different. When you were six years old, you probably had uh, twenty pounds strapped to each leg, man. It was a exactly. different day. Yeah, yeah. 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 The pad is like I'm lifting my son's pad. I'm like, what is that? Like he's lifting my my it's amazing and my beer can. It's the same. It's crazy the, how it involved and the technique and everything. I was just talking to one of my clients the other day, and because he's asking a lot of questions, he's a uh, his name is uh, Jacob. He plays for the AAA U uh, thirteen in the Kenyan Peninsula, and he's. He asked a lot of questions and he was like, well, back in your day, like how was things? I said, hey, back when I was your age, I was playing two pad stack with yeah. one 
like the, my goalie coach was teaching me, you need to keep your arms straight on the ice, two <laughs> pads back to cut the passes with your arm. You know, yeah, two that's pads a strategy. Back. Yeah, two pads back. Like we'll never see that, you know, in our life back now. But you know, that's how we we learn, and then I evolve with the technique, and that's what I'm I'm teaching now. But you know, sometimes I use it during the games and. Whatever. It's, it's a habit. Yeah, whatever works. <laughs> yeah, of course. Take the player out while you do the stack. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, That's it. That's the key. That's the key. Corey, you got anything else? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. <laughs> I got nothing else. Uh, I was here to just have a chat with Charles Austin and listen to those stories. Uh, thank you for, for those. That game in Miramichi, the brawl game, I've seen that video a hundred times, I think. It just... You don't think something like that's going to happen. Corey showed it to me and he's like, you got to see this. And he's like, check out who's in net too. It's our old buddy there. Oh my God. Well, uh, oh, I, and I learned you, like I, I've heard about that, that brawl over and over and over, but that will be one of my, the highlights of my career. Right. Right. Like, yeah, I, I was the goalie for that brawl and, and it was just a time that we started to put, like, Mark Richardson was just putting, like, uh, videos on Facebook and, and YouTube. And, uh, yeah, everyone, they caught. And you have, like, different angles. You can see yep. all the different oh, yeah. angles, how I got beat up there. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway, it was just. Uh, but back, back then, that was that was the hockey you know, the, the league it evolves so much now, like it happens. It's fun that for the fans, like it happens, it happens. Like I said, I would like the, the rule to change for the t- last 10 minutes just to keep everything straight. But back then, you know, like we had two tough guys in track and and we were not tough, but we had to have two tough guys. And Mary, she had like six or seven of them and Dows, he had you know, tough guys too. And it was two, the two fight rules. And, you know, I remember Patrick Loudon, we went to a, a game in Karakat and he didn't know, he just got into the league and he didn't know much about the, the guys. He just got from the Titan there and he was like top shape. I actually saw Patrick this week at Sobeys. And anyway, and uh, so we said, uh, hey, uh, Nicolas Chiasson, he was a lefty. And we said, like, hey, be careful, Nicolas Chasson, because that back then, in the Acadie Chaleur, he, Nicolas Chasson was the tough guy across, like, the league. He's like, lefty? He's like, that's perfect. We're going to go wide open then. They were just like, you know, he's this one going to go like this, and this one going to go like that. And he said, oh, that's nice. We're going to go wide open. And we were like, what? You know, like, finishing... It was a two-fight rule. We went to Mary Machine. I remember we were leading, like, winning the game after two periods. Like, it was obvious for us we were going to win. And I remember Andre Sony was the coach. He was doing both jobs. And he yeah. said, guys, in French, like, guys, we don't start anything. We're just going to finish the game and leave with the two points. And Patrick wasn't good in French. Like he knew he knew a little bit of French, but not as good. And he said, uh, what did the Andre said? Well, he said, don't start anything. We're just gonna finish the game and, and leave and pack up and leave. He said, No, no, no. I'll fight them twice. That's what they want. And then we'll leave. So he got on the ice, he fought Matt Shannon, finished the fight. It was two fight rule at the uh, Lord Beaver Brook. Finished the fight. Point at at uh, Nate Foreign, you're next. It was just like crazy. I was like, what? Yeah, they didn't care. Like, let's go. Let's uh, let's give let's give everybody a show. The good old days. Good old days. Oh my god. And and in my net, I'm I'm shitting my pants and seeing all of them and uh, how tough they were. Oh my god. Yeah. I love it. I love it. We'll uh We'll do this again. Sure. <laughs> Charles, like anytime. Yeah, He's the yeah, best, any, man. He's yeah. such a guy. I have, I have if if you don't have anybody, uh, 
give me a shout out and I'll come. I have many other stories. I know, about, I know you do. About uh, Chris Keating. Oh, you got a good Chris Keating story? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, do you want we'll it now or do that. you want to say it? Go for it. Oh, I'll finish. Up. We'll finish yeah. on that. So, All right, go. Uh, back, uh, I, I was playing high school. Okay. And uh, my uh, when I was in grade 12, I decided to play as a forward. Okay. Never played forward before. The only thing I was on rollerblades my entire summer, I could spend like three pair of rollerblades in the summer. Okay. That's how much I was shooting pucks and shooting pucks. And my last year, I quit the Miramichi Riverman back then, Midget AAA. And Real Payment was our coach. And we didn't have a good experience anyway. So we got back. All of our good players got back high school. And I said, I'm going to play forward. And everybody was upset because I was like one of the good goalies across the across the high school league. And then I played forward and I finished second score of the league. So anyway, and I remember uh, Chris Keating was the Oh my God, he was tough. Anyway, and I got a hit from Chris Keating. And I just like, he hit me so hard. Never had like hits before in my life. He hit me so hard that like both of my shoulders like touched each other. Like <laughs> it was crazy. I just fell on the ice flat, boom, left left on, on the bench and, uh, and my coach came to me and it, my coach was like a special character. He's like, hey, Charlie, are you okay? And I'm like, no, no. He's like, it's worse than that in Vietnam, buddy. Like, let's go. <laughs> so anyway, we got I got back on the ice and here come Chris Keating again like a train. Hits, I try to shot, hits me like, bang. And that second hit of the game, I'm done. Like they escorted me out of the uh, out of the eyes. So I I hear a knock at the door, top, top, top. So I'm getting up like I'm super bad then. I probably had like a concussion like for sure. That yeah. was like 20 years ago. Open the door, Chris Keating's mom. So I'm like, hey, so still like in the in the clouds. I'm like, yes. She's like, yes, my son hit you twice. I'm so sorry, she said. Like, I want to apologize from him. Like, oh, oh, he's such a dirty player, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, oh, oh, okay. And then over the years, I played against Chris as, as a, but I had so much respect for that guy. Yeah, man. He's, he's an underrated, tough guy in the league. Such a great captain. Uh, I hope for the Riff, for the Northmen anyway. I hope he continues because still has such a big impact on that team. But yeah, that that's Chris Keating, tough guy. Like and man, he can hit. And yeah, he, man, I, that guy can throw a hell of a hit. He's an incredible leader and uh, yeah, one of one of the best guys in the league for sure. So yeah, his mom talk talk talk. Yeah, I want to apologize for my son. He's a dirty player. She said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. But it was a clean hit. It's just like that was my biggest challenge. Never got, never played check there before, never played forward. But I was a great skater. That's how I got my points. But man, like to when you know your head down and that train is coming towards you, he was hitting me so hard. <laughs> oh my God. But you know, Back then, when I was young, I was a little bit uh, of a chirper, I would say. Uh, okay, yeah. So in net, I would chirp the guys, and you know, but when I got to play forward, I got my old medicine back, and <laughs> it was one of them. Anyway, yeah, funny story. I love that man. That's yeah, a great yeah. one. All right, buddy. We'll uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for uh, coming on again, man. It's just such an honor to have you on. The uh, the legend himself, Charles Austin. Thanks, guys. Thank nice you. Life.